so I'll, I'll I'll see when we're live here at some point okay there we go all right all right we are now live at this point what is good everyone OJ here welcome back to another player essence cross Nintendo podcast we are back after a slight uh hiatus what did I what happened did I fall asleep last time or was that oh no I was moving all my stuff so I just didn't have the so I just didn't have time that's what happened last week but we are back with a brand new episode of the podcast uh thank you guys for joining us of course I've got my awesome co-host stealth here with me stealth how are you doing today sir I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I, I mean, I can't complain too much. We've got the podcast this week. I'm not asleep or crazy stuff happening. So that's definitely a positive. Definitely a positive. Actually, you know what? They couldn't hear anything that you said. Uh, so say, go ahead and say hi again, Stealth. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me now. Okay, yes. They can definitely hear you now. <laughs> that, that, yeah, yo, the, uh, the desktop audio was definitely muted. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> that was not your fault. That was my fault. Um, all right, though, guys. What's good? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, hopefully, like I said, you guys are having a great day. We've got a jam-packed show full of uh, topics to go over. Definitely a lot of cool topics to go over. So we are going to be doing that. Um, but before we get into it, guys, I want to say thank you for the support that we've seen so far with you guys' memberships and also with uh, the Patreon as well. If you want to directly support the show, you can always do so. Link is in the description on Patreon. There's some pretty cool... Uh, rewards and tiers there in there for people or you can support through the memberships like you guys have already been doing so thank you guys for your support we appreciate it and let's go ahead and let's jump into the uh, first topic here we have the limited run games showcase so this was interesting because pretty much everything was announced for switch there was some cool um you know classic game announcements uh, a lot of just dope stuff like th i think that stuff that people have really been wanting uh, you know to be released uh so there was over 20 game announcements uh for this show and uh there's stuff like uh castlevania advanced collection that was announced uh gargoyles remastered which was interesting jurassic park games uh there was a lot of really cool stuff um you know other physical editions uh river city girls zero trip world dx um and the two probably the two biggest ones well outside of castlevania advanced collection but kind of like the new announcements was uh, the Gex Trilogy, which was not known beforehand. There might've been some rumors, but I missed it. But Gex Trilogy and um, Tomba. So the, what was it, 97, 90, 90, something like that. Late, yeah. mid to late nineties, uh, PS1 action adventure platformer game, you know, that uh, was very iconic um, at that time. And so uh, Tomba's coming back and all of it's on the mvg carbon engine you know so we're getting a lot of carbon goodness so um stealth in terms of this uh this so far what was your favorite announcement what did you think about the uh the uh the show yeah overall i, th I thought it was a you know a good mix of indie games physical game announcements and just like new game announcements um it was fast-paced you know, I, I thought it was very, very good. And like you said, most thing, I think almost everything was on, is coming to Switch that they announced. Um, I can't think of anything that wasn't. Um, you know, in terms of my favorite announcements, like I, I've been waiting for the Castlevania Advance Collection to get a physical release. Um, I have the link up on my desktop just so I know when the pre-orders go live so I could just nab it. Um, and, and what's cool is they have four cover, or I think three or four covers based on the different games and maybe one original one. Um, and I'm definitely going to go with the Aria of Sorrow cover, mm -hmm. um, but I'm looking forward to that. Almost all, like, I think it's $34.99 right now. Um, I have been purchasing some limited run games on this games on the secondhand market, and they're expensive, and they can get expensive over time. Yeah. Um, so it's not going to be $34.99 if you miss out on it for, you know, this initial period. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Tomba. I don't think anyone expected that to come back. It's no. actually a very, very good game. Yeah. Um, and and I know hopefully Tomba Two is you know a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. at some point. Um, Absolutely. I never played the Gex games. I'd be interested to play those. Yeah. I um, haven't played them. Yeah, it's Gex is interesting because I I like the first Gex game. It's a two D platformer, 
with some really cool stuff and then like the the second and third are more like the 3d like the n64 and uh stuff like that so so yeah man yeah and then in terms of like the one indie game announcement which which you didn't actually mention um Z i forget the title uh zboid games announced a switch version for one of their latest games which is actually critically acclaimed um it, it, it's it's kind of it stars like kind of magical girl anime tropes um and it's turn-based and it's it's sprite based too um let me let me see if i can pull up the name yeah i i have the whole list of games so i'm gonna you can go ahead and pull it up and i'm gonna go over this i want to say shout outs to flipping the switch with the big ten dollars there was no message though so if you have a question or if you have uh, something that you want to talk about uh, flipping the switch feel free to let us know also guys for those who are members um you can also or even on patreon you can ask questions if you go to the discord uh, the player essence cross nintendo questions sidebar you will be able to put you can put your questions in there and we will uh get around to answering your questions uh so did you find it or Stalt? i can go yeah. over the names here okay yeah. what is it so it's called this way madness lies um and it's this. coming to switch next week oh okay um, i see it here it's the last it's the they, i have it in alphabetical order yeah so yes i and, see and it and then the official description is, are you a magical enough magical girl to shape the Shakespearean metaverse from the forces of evil? Um, and it's literally like a magical girl Sailor Moon party, but in a turn-based RPG. Right, so. um, Sprite-based. It actually looks pretty interesting. Um, and it came to PC before. This is the first console release, I believe, and it got great reviews. Um, so it's another indie RPG to look forward to. Yeah, I'm showing them some pictures um of it we're all kind of taking a look uh yeah so yeah yeah it's definitely like a part like, so it looks pretty cool i like the perspective it's almost like um golden sun a, a little bit yeah like with the with the you know you're they're facing like it's kind of like at an angle um yeah you know and uh yeah very interesting very very interesting i, I had no idea this was supposed to be like a, a good game so wait hold up here is, is it where because i see three or you can have up to four girls in your party but it's they only show one girl at a time on screen yeah I'm, I, honestly i'm not exactly sure I, I didn't really cover the game much when it was on pc or look at it i just know yeah. it was turn-based um and you know i'm looking forward to trying it out on switch okay yeah, yeah just because I, I see that there's multiple girls here and like you yeah know, it's definitely sailor, inspired by sailor moon um yeah you got all sorts of accessories and uh you've got tiaras and all sorts of stuff like that it's like it looks like traditional you know 16-bit rpg you know um but no this is cool man this is this is definitely cool De definitely cool. looking forward to uh seeing more about it and everything um but yeah man uh i do have the list here for those who want to know about the full list of games uh so we can go over that um and then we can kind of discuss some more stuff with the limited run games because i think that it's interesting for me you know gex was big you know the fact like the first gex that's the game that i'm like okay cool because i like the you know the 3d platformers i'm not as big on 3d platforms as other people are um so i've never i was never big on like banjo kazooie like i'm big on like mario 3d platformers like those are great but i'm not big on like a lot of other 3d platformers i just don't think a lot of people do it right personally um but i, I think like the hat in time that was pretty good you know um, that that was solid and i think that new What's that game that's coming from the people who made Sonic Mania? That uh, Pennies something? It's like a 3D platform. It was announced at the Nintendo Direct. Uh, that looks good. Uh, that, that one looks pretty good. But uh, another Crusade, Arzette, the Jewel of Faramore, Castlevania Advance Collection, Chicory, Clock Tower, which is a pretty cool Clock Tower, Colossal Cave, Double Shake, Dungeons of Either, El Shaddai, Ascension of the uh, Metatron, Gargoyles Remastered, that's pretty cool. I remember renting that game back in the day. Uh, Gex Trilogy, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park uh, Classic Games Collection, RGT, love those. Uh, Jurassic Park, The Chaos Continues, a lot of Jurassic Park. Uh, Karateka, I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, I don't know how to say these names, but Scarlet Symphony, there's a bunch of Japanese things. Tiger Hel Heli Collection, Midnight Flight Express, Odin's Cat's Paradise, Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, Definitive Edition, you gotta have Plumbers Don't Wear Ties uh rise of the triad ludicrous edition uh Laura, roller coaster tycoon 3 complete edition rose and camellia collection shante advanced risky's revolution let's go uh team yeah we, we, we actually didn't talk about that yeah um, we did that's it. like uh not canceled but it, it was a in development game boy advance game they never finished it and so now i guess they finished it um, I'd be a lot more excited about it if, if it, you know, it, it's cool that it's releasing on an actual Game Boy Advance cart. I, I like that. Yeah. But release it on Switch and all the other platforms too. 
Um, it's, you know, it's not coming to Switch? No, no. It's just the Game Boy now. Advance cartridge. Just the Game Boy Advance cartridge for right now. Yeah, that's that's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm sure I'm sure they'll bring it to everything eventually. Okay, yeah, um, they, def they definitely need to do that. Yeah, that's but, why I was a little muted on that, but okay. in theory, it's cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you have the TMNT uh, soundtrack collection. For those who don't know, the old school TMNT game has some of the best music ever. <laughs> that TMNT, the game is freaking hard as hell. But the music in that game is ridiculously good. For 8-bit, you know, NES music, it's very good. So I can see why they're doing the collection. But it has some of the most, like, icon... I, I can still remember, like, the title screen, uh, you know, music to that. Like, it's still some of the best music. So if you're interested in stuff like that, check out the TMNT uh, soundtrack collection. Uh, Tomba and The Way of Madness. So pretty solid, uh, you know, for me, pretty solid stuff. Yeah. You know, Castlevania Advance Collection, of course definitely copying that those gba castlevania games are expensive like physical if you want them so yeah i agree with stealth on there um if you want if you want to like you know th that's probably going to go up in price um eventually so yeah and for me another one is the um gargoyles that's awesome and the gex trilogy that's awesome as well the jurassic park stuff is pretty cool too uh, but yeah, man, Gargoyles Remastered, definitely gonna be picking that up. But yeah, the Gex Trilogy, I want to see how that works out. And then Tomba, like, I want to see how that, like, they didn't show any gameplay, though. What, what did you think about not having any gameplay? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, we, we, we you know, the game's been out forever. So we, we kind of know how it's going to be. And, you know, I have trust in Limited Run that it'll run good. Um, you know, I, I kind of like the niche of this um, showcase where it's like, you know, it's indie games, it's physical games, it's retro games. And you know, there, there, there's not many conferences that just announced like really obscure retro games that you just wouldn't expect to come back. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's cool. You know, I hope that I hope they do it again. You know, more frequently. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, pretty good showcase. Um, you know, it was fun. It was fun, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully people pick up. You pick up what you want uh, from there. But now we are going to. And uh, once again, shout out to Flipping the Switch. Thank you for the big ten, man. Appreciate that. Um, Next, we're going to move on to the next topic here. Uh, we're going to discuss, and I actually, why do I not have it here? All right, so I my, my, my topic list disappeared. Okay, here it is. Uh, next, we're going to talk about the top 30 downloads in Japan, which I think was very interesting. Uh, so the Japanese eShop, they put out a list, or Nintendo more like put out a list of the best selling uh, games for the first half of 2023. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people talk about, you know, obviously the physical digital divide. Nintendo, it, 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 they've been murky on this because it's 50-50, but it's 50-50 because there's a bunch of games on the eShop that aren't, you know, that are not available physical. But the eShop is, do basically the eShop is doing crazy numbers. Like you're seeing games sell millions of copies simply just on the eShop alone, which is significant to talk about this, right? So uh the top 30 came out shout outs to stealth i mean you reminded me about this because i didn't i forgot about it but i'm gonna go from the bottom to the top and then of course stealth you can list out some of your or if you want you can interrupt me and list out some things that you're uh that you, you want to talk about so going from the bottom pikmin 2 actually made it in there um even though it just like launched so that's interesting this is the first half of uh 2023 um at 30 so 29 was mario party superstars story of seasons a wonderful life uh, Momotaro, that game's never ending. Uh, Power Wash Simulator, interesting with Square Enix game Power Wash Simulator in there. Uh, Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy V, both of those games as well. Kirby's Dream Buffet, Nintendo Switch Sports, Among Us, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy, Persona 3 Portable, Pokemon Violet, Human Fall Flat, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Minecraft, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Persona 4 Golden, Clubhouse Games, 51 Worldwide Classics, Overcooked 2, Pokemon Scarlet, uh, Monster Hunter Rise at number 9 here. So we're in the top 10 from Pokemon Scarlet and up. Uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, Mega, uh, Mega, Man, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection Volume 1, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild at number 6, Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection Volume 2, Splatoon 3 at number 4, uh, number three is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Number two is Fire Emblem Engage. I want to talk about that in just a bit. And number one, of course, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So 
uh out of that list there stealth what did you find very interesting or what are your thoughts uh when it comes to that list yeah i mean so we we, we, we could definitely talk about it but you know fire emblem fire emblem at number two um you know just more proof that just because engage might not sell as much as three houses doesn't mean it didn't sell good mm -hmm. um you know it sold very well um and then also Mega Man battle network collection in the top five i think was surprising for a lot of people um you know i guess you'd figure the top five would be all nintendo games and somehow capcom sneaked in there um you know so more 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 evidence and proof that you know Mega Man isn't dead, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take a new game anytime, please. Um, and then, you know, the classic games, you know, people love buying classic old games on Switch. You know, the Final Fantasies, the Personas, the Pikmins, you know, the Mega Mans. You release an old game on Switch and it's done right, you have a chance to get, get good sales there. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I think that um, for me, the standout is definitely like Fire Emblem Engage. It's one of the things that popped out to me because I actually watched the video from Mangs, who's a big uh, Fire Emblem content creator. He's like, hey, was it a was it a failure? You know, people have been questioning it because it's not selling as well as Fire Emblem Three Houses. But once you play the game, you're like, okay, that's the reason why it's not selling as well. As, I mean, it's not that massive, you know, like, like, okay, this is the next like main lord that they're gonna be focusing on. It definitely feels like an anniversary game. It feels like something that yeah. was put together for the fans, like, you know, with a small, little bit smaller budget, not as much development time, and it's a fun game to play, like, for Fire Emblem fans, because there's so many things that, if you don't play Fire Emblem, it's gonna be a little weird, if, like, if you don't play the games, like, with, cer with certain characters, like, them just talking about things, because they don't explain everything, they just tell you, well, this is where I was, and this is what I did, so, if you have no attachment to that, you're gonna be like, okay, and Nintendo hasn't done the greatest job in bringing all the games over and being able to play them so it's gonna be a little bit disconnected for some people but yeah it's selling really good on the eShop that's the one thing that people um you know that people aren't realizing that it's doing really well um on the eShop and I think it's gonna be a long-term seller as well so I mean I think they said it sold 1.6 million already um in that first I think it was what was it the first yeah uh, that first month or whatever it sold so i think it's going to continue on two million plus and uh, we'll see where it gets ends up another cool thing uh that i found with this list uh yeah the classic games like you said man the classic games were dope it's good to see mega man you know do so well now we heard about mega man selling over one million units you know uh very quickly I, i'm pretty sure like a large bulk of that is just like switch uh, I wish there was a breakdown, but I'm pretty sure yeah. so much of that is just eShop people just like impulse buying. This is a lot of people's childhood. For a lot of people that are in their 20s, they grew up with this. Like if they're in their like teen, late teens or 20s, this is their Mega Man. You know, this is their Mega Man that they grew up with. Um, so yeah, I can definitely. I, I mean, I, I didn't think the game would do that well that fast, but I'm not surprised that it's doing you know uh that well and also some of the evergreen stuff was interesting uh you know stuff like uh, monster hunter rise still being in the top 10 you know that game came out uh two years ago two years plus ago it came out i think uh, early 2021 if i'm not correct and uh that game's still in the top as well so yeah yeah interesting nonetheless um interesting yeah i sure. would say there's one big omission um i'm sure you probably noticed it too maybe um and it's octopath traveler 2. oh yeah um, yeah yeah no octopath it, on there yeah it's very very strange it didn't make the top 30 even yeah yeah um, very interesting uh, i was wondering what what went on with that i guess maybe mobile i assume most sales were actually in the u.s for for for, for octopath anyway mm -hmm. um but you know it, and i guess most sales were, were were physical it's just very strange yeah um yeah. that you know it didn't it didn't chart at all even though we know it passed a million units yeah, we know it passed a million. We don't have the breakdown in terms of, you know, PlayStation and all that. But I mean, I, I didn't really see it. Like, I, here's what the here's the flow of the game that I saw. People, initially it came out. Uh, it wasn't pre-ordering as well as the previous game or it wasn't doing as well at the beginning. Uh, we know that. And then it got discounted kind of early on. Um, and then it got discounted again. And then I, it kind of got like little mini discounted. And then it got like discounted again. And then that second one, really boosted things up from what i saw on um on amazon the the sales shot up to the top 10 on this the switch version so you can kind of follow the curve and then a little bit later after that they announced that okay it sold you know a million units now it wasn't really like if you go on the steam uh steam charts or whatever or like the steam like where it shows like the peak it didn't really do anything on steam i, I doubt 
oh, so many guys weren't even talking about it. PlayStation people weren't even talking because they didn't get the first game, you know? So uh, most of that was on there. But is there, um, what do you think is the reason uh, for that? For, for that? I mean, I, I have my own ideas why I think, but I, I'm, I'm, I don't think we talked about this. So what do you think the reason why Octopath maybe didn't get as much, uh, you know, get as much uh, play this, or at least get as much publicity and sales this time around, this, you know, as fast as the, I guess, the first game, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Um, you know, it, it did okay physically, you know, yeah. checking ch checking the uh, Famitsu charts. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure why it just didn't seem to resonate digitally, where it didn't even make the top 30. And, and I'm trying to think, I don't, I don't think there were any other big games released in Kirby. February Kirby. other than Kirby. Other yeah, than Kirby. Kirby. Kirby was the game, it seems like everybody's, oh yeah, Kirby. Because Kirby's on this list, right? Yeah, Kirby. Kirby. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Kirby made the list, so I think maybe releasing the same day as Kirby might have been a mistake. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, honestly, in Japan, there's just so many RPGs on Switch. It, 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 it's tough, um, you know, just to get that notice and attention just in general. But, um, yeah, I, I just found it strange. I do think most of the sales are probably Switch owners in the U.S. That's just my feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where uh, Switch owners definitely in the U.S. That's where it seems like uh, most of it was really uh, focused on. But yeah, I still think that over the course of time, uh, the game will do better because it, it did do better as things went on. And they did announce, you know, a million units. So that's going to continue the streak of uh, Team Asano main games, you know, new games getting a million plus units. So that's good. That's a good thing. Um, I'm interested to see exactly. I know we didn't discuss this uh, too much, but Live Alive. Um, I know that they, it was over 500,000 units, but they really haven't given an update since then. And then they launched it on PC, PS4, and PS5. So I really want to know where, like, I wish they gave us, like, the sales of that. I wonder where that's yeah. kind of at, like, you know, like how well it did there. Because it got its own release, right? It was separate from the Switch version. So that one was just focused on PC and PlayStation audience. So I wonder, wonder if that added any, you know, good boost or not, you know? Yeah, I mean, if that game sold over a million units, that'd be pretty extraordinary for, like, a 30-year-old niche RPG like that. Yeah, that would be wild if it did. That'd be that'd be super wild, because usually you don't, you don't see stuff like that. Even, like, whenever they do, like, remakes of popular games, even those seem to, like, maybe not quite do as well until, they, like, they get steep discounts, you know? Some people were comparing uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake to, like, Final Fantasy, right? And stuff like that, like... Oh, wait a minute hold up it's a remake <laughs> but i guess because re2 remake did really well um but re2 remake did really well like at 20 dollars. you know that's when it, i mean it did well at the beginning but it did really well like when it was like discounted um so yeah very interesting very interesting uh any other thoughts on that man or just want to maybe move on to the next topic here yeah i mean we can move on i mean honestly the top five not too surprising obviously zelda you yeah. know it, it's you know, Nintendo's next financial statement is August 3rd or 4th, so it's mm -hmm. coming up. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get the worldwide sales of Zelda, and it's going to be huge. Um, it's going to be real big. And then, you know, obviously, Splatoon 3, Japan, eh, this goes without saying, and then obviously Mario Kart. It's, you know, as Switch is really picked back up in sales again, obviously people are picking up Mario Kart again in Splatoon. So, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't too shocking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, Tears of the Kingdom, yeah. that is uh, going to be a yeah. massive uh, <laughs> a massive launch. Although I, I did tweet about this. This list is going to change a lot by the end of the year. Okay. Um, because, you know, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, it's going to make a run at number one. Um, the new Momotaro game, okay. it, that's going to be number, that, that's going to be top five. Because, you know, the first the, the game a couple of years ago, Sold over 4 million units on Switch in Japan. Yeah, just so it's a Japan, big deal. Japan alone, like, they don't even bring those games out to the U.S. No. Or, like, anywhere else. So it's a big deal. And then you got Pikmin 4 and Super Mario RPG. And then also the new Dragon Quest Monsters game. So, um, yeah, this, this list is going to get shaken up a lot. Yeah. Um, and speaking of being shaken up, shout out to my man Massive Recon. Thank you for the big $20 donation. And he says, love the podcast, guys. You're the most trusted source, in my opinion, when it comes to accurate sales and uh, analytics and sales predictions. Keep doing what you uh, what you guys do. And I hope for y'all explosive growth. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, man. Um, it's more just about, obviously, 
Uh, we're doing a, you know, just putting the right information out there and just an extension of what we already do here on Player Essence. I, I, and I like giving Stealth a voice too because he doesn't really do, you know, he doesn't really do like content himself, but it's great to have him on. I uh, bring that knowledge because I learn a lot as well. Uh, whenever <laughs> Stealth's Twitter, man, that's where you learn a lot. You learn quite a bit of stuff from that Twitter account and then also, also having him on here. Uh, so thank you for the big $20 massive Reekin. I do appreciate that. Thank you guys for the support. Make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't already hit that like button uh we do appreciate that here thank you to everybody who's watching 100 plus people watching do appreciate you guys uh here i do want to mention uh once nintendo announces those sales for tears of the kingdom it's going to be interesting to see what people think if it's going to still like because like i saw so many people saying it's not going to outsell breath of the wild it's not going to outsell breath of the wild but if it does 50 percent plus of breath of the wild sales in like the first three months right the, the first number of months I, I don't know i people might change their mind on that you know so i predict a lot of saltiness yeah um <laughs> i yeah. mean the game's been at least you know i follow the us e shop it's been number one on the us e shop straight every day for two months yeah um you know it's still selling crazy um so yeah and it was number one in japan physically last week yeah yeah uh, number so yeah. It, it's 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 still selling like like you know i i yeah, I mean, if it hits like even close to twenty million in like a couple months, that'd be insane. Yeah, Paul Gale is um, is stating it, it sold, or I think he said something like fifteen percent of the base or something like that. So he's having the numbers around eighteen, uh, eighteen, almost nineteen million. That's where he said he's crazy. I mean, yeah, I mean, in one year, give it a holiday. Yeah, no it's holiday. It's gonna be real close. Yeah, yeah no holiday because like that's the thing that people don't realize that it hasn't gotten a holiday yet you know yeah yeah hasn't gotten a holiday and that's just that that's wild man tears of the kingdom is, is crazy so i mean it's no surprise that it's number one but that right there tells you like because remember this is the first half yeah. so that means you know <laughs> like it just launched I mean, yeah i mean i mean and it's no guarantee that mario is gonna beat it yeah um just just because of how much more time zelda has um you know you know, I'm pretty confident that Mario Wonder in Japan is going to launch at a million. You know, I think that's I think that's a, a good guarantee. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's like, you know, it, it's going to have legs. Yeah. Um, as all Mario games do. But yeah, I mean, you know, I'm really not sure if Mario can can beat Zelda, which I never thought I'd say in Japan. I, you know, I never thought so as well. Um, Mario games are interesting. Like 2D Mario games are interesting because it takes a while for them to kind of get going. Like they, they can start good, but it does. It's just over time. Like, yeah, because you know they don't have the bombastic cutscenes. It's no. not an action game. It, it's different, but it's always critically acclaimed usually. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's Mario, and it's a family game. That that's the thing. When, when when people walk into Best Buy or Walmart, and and they see a whole stack of Mario, they're gonna be like, hmm, you know what? I'm gonna buy this for Christmas, Black Friday, and that's and that's how it's gonna get done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's just gonna be over the course of like I, I expect. I, I think Super Mario Bros. Wonder like three years from now, people are gonna be like, oh wow, it's like at like you know, 27 million. I don't know. It's gonna be like such as the sneakiest. 20 million plus yeah. you know game ever just like you know new super mario bros u deluxe like out of like literally like out of nowhere oh it's in the top 10 now like that game sold 173,000 units in its debut in japan like that's it i mean that was well less than final fantasy you're like 16 or well less than many 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 other games right well less than many other games that have done you know that have done good that have done really well and not at this point you know it's at i think it's almost at 16 million right i think it's at 15 yeah well it's past 15 that's all yeah. we know yeah but, past, so uh yeah and I, I love that game too yeah um, it's yeah. one of my favorite games yeah i, I beat uh, the game on the wii u i was like i started playing on the switch i was like okay i've had enough but uh but i know it's a good game though because i did play the heck out of it on the wii u yeah, but yeah, no one, no one was like, wait, that sold 15 million units. It just didn't seem that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I had people. Uh, it, it's so obscure in terms of the sales of those games. A lot of people don't even know that 2D Mario sells that well. Like a lot of people are very, like they were, they were like questioning. Like when I said, oh well, it's not. People were talking about all oh, the pre-orders. I think there was like a thread that you had. I'm on Twitter where people were talking about like the pre-orders and I'm like, yeah, yeah. well, it's not a pre-order beast. And then somebody's like, well, you didn't say that about this game. And I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> well, of course I didn't say that about it. Yeah. Cause a game that's front loaded compared to yeah. a game that sells over time. I'm going like, I'm not going to change my analysis for console wars, you know, like, like what the heck? <laughs> like if yeah, a game sells I, I, well I, over time, but I'm going to say it sells well over time. If a game is front loaded and sells well based off of pre-orders, I'm going to say that it has nothing to do with the console wars, you know, or what, being fair it's video game sales aren't fair let me just say that right now 
<laughs> People think yeah, it's I, like, I, oh, I, you gotta I, be I, fair. I yeah, I tweeted about that, that that Amazon chart, and I thought it was interesting, like, right after the Direct, what was the most popular, and it just happened to be Super Mario RPG mm -hmm. versus the new 2D Mario game for, for, like, a day, and then Zelda shot right back up to number one. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. You know, it, it, it wasn't, like, bad. It was number three. Um, yeah. But, you know, it believe me, and I think I said this then, like, we're going to get closer to the holidays and watch that get pre-ordered like crazy. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be pre-ordered way more and people are just going to walk in there. Like, give me, give me a copy of that. So, yeah. uh, so awesome. Awesome. All right. Let's go to, let's, uh, move on to the next topic here. Um, let me pull it. It always gets weird with this thing. So, all right. We are on the one week, pretty much the week before Pikmin 4 launches, guys. The next big release in Japan. Uh, the demo is out there for people to play. I think Nintendo's done a pretty good job in terms of as much clout as you can build for a franchise like Pikmin, right? Like, this is probably the best. I mean, they got a demo. They had trailers. It's, you know, they've removed a lot of the restrictions, the, the nighttime stuff, you know. So, um, Pikmin 4 is coming out next week. Um, and I wanted to get your final. You can't move off of this stealth. All right. Final. Because we're going to know the Metacritic beforehand. Yeah. Final Metacritic and opening week sales. I, I guess we'll have another week to get the opening week sales. So that's this is not as important. But the Metacritic is... So what is your final prediction for the Metacritic? Um, I know that you know the previous game's Metacritic, so I don't have to repeat that. But I'll repeat it for the audience. <laughs> the previous game's the lowest that it's ever gotten in terms of a new release is an 87, if I'm not correct. Um, Pikmin 3 right. has an 87 on the Wii U. Pikmin 2... I think that has a 90 or 91 90 90 and then pikmin 90. 1 has an 89 89 yeah, yeah 89. and we're, we're not counting hey pikmin here that doesn't no, count. no no we're not counting hey pikmin and we're not and i did not count uh pikmin 3 deluxe on the switch because yeah. that's that that is a remaster or re-release of the game i mean it's better than the wii u game but it's got an 85 so we're just talking about yeah. the, the first release pikmin uh but if you want to use the lowest is let's just say mainline pikmin games 85 we'll just say that if you want to do if you want to go that route hey pikmin that, like I said, that I'm not counting that game because it's not a Pikmin. It's not a normal Pikmin game. But what is your prediction here with this one? Um, you know, I guess maybe I'll be a downer and say it's going to score the lowest that any Pikmin game has. But it's still going to score very good. I'll say 85. Okay, um, 85. Okay. Yeah. So I'll say it's very good. Um, I have seen some complaints about the demo. And, and we'll see how much that comes into play during the reviews maybe that's kind of influencing my thinking a little bit too much oh good um, absolutely but yeah i mean i'll say it scores an 85 would be the lowest pikmin game but still very good no one's gonna be like oh boohoo 85 yeah um you know so yeah i think that's gonna be very good in terms of sales um i don't know i'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna put like a million value on it but i'll say it's gonna be the, the best selling pikmin game after okay. not that long Okay. Um, because Pikmin 3 Deluxe became the best-selling Pikmin game, and it only sold like 3 million units. Yeah. Um, so I I feel like Pikmin 4 can sell 4 million units. Yeah. Um, so I'll just predict that it's going to be the best-selling Pikmin game. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's definitely a, a way of doing it. Um, I think this is, this is probably one of the most interesting games to predict, right? Because we haven't had a real brand new Pikmin game in such a long time. And Pikmin is such an obscure franchise, right? We've had three in the last, three main games in the last uh, 20 plus, 20 years or whatever. Um, but if I had to put a number on it, I'm gonna go in and say, I'm gonna go a little bit higher. I'm gonna say it's gonna match Pikmin 3 on the, the, the Wii. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in and say, no, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say 100. No, I'm gonna go 100. 86, <laughs> that's what I'm going with. <laughs> I'm not gonna get that. They can't give it the same one. So I'm gonna go 86 on- I feel uh, like I influenced you there. I feel like you were gonna go higher. No, I thought point. I was gonna go higher, but yeah, you did say something there. But I, the, the reason why is because Pikmin 3 Deluxe. To me, it's like, hey, that one got an 85. That was, that one added content. That one did a lot of cool yeah. things. It was, you know, it had a lot of features. And that was an 85. And I know it was a remaster. So always remasters and remakes, re-releases. They always get- points lower it doesn't matter how much better it is than the original it always happens right this is a brand new game but i'm thinking that they're gonna reward it by being just a little bit better than that remaster so i'm gonna go 86 maybe 87 maybe 87 so we'll see 86 to 87 somewhere 
somewhere somewhere there but i'm excited to check it out you know i'm excited to play it um in terms of the the, the numbers the opening week in japan is going to be interesting because it's charting um actually a bit better than final fantasy 16 i don't think it's gonna it'd be it would be incredible if it sold over 300,000 units plus that would be nuts for pikmin so do you think that there's any possibility what, what are the chances that that happens do you think that's a possibility I mean, it's not going to sell 3 million in, in a week like like Final Fantasy did. No, hell um, no. Hell no. I was just talking about Japan. <laughs> yeah. The Japanese but, Famitsu. Yeah, I mean, it's weird because it's been like, you know, Famitsu does like a most anticipated games list, and it's been like number one, which is surprising to me. Mm -hmm. um, because it's like, Pikmin hasn't always been that popular. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I think it's, I think it's going to do, I mean, obviously it's going to be number one on the charts, the, 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 the uh, week it launches. Um, but I'm not really sure. You know, I feel like I need to see it first to believe it. Um, if it's high, um, you know, at least a couple hundred thousand for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two hundred thousand plus. That's what I'm guessing. That it's gonna yeah. be at least two hundred thousand. Pikmin Three Deluxe was like I think like a hundred and forty or hundred and fifty thousand units. So I think that Pikmin Four could definitely top that, which would be very good for that type of game you know which would be very very good for that type of game so yeah i can see 200,000 units plus and if it did 300,000 i'd be shocked but yeah it's not going to sell 3 million um in the first six days <laughs> i think in in terms of overall sales yeah i think it's going to be the best selling pikmin game of all time uh once again yeah. like you said stealth not saying too much but it's still impressive for that franchise and it's something to, for the fans you know to to be able to have you know some fans yeah i, I mean it's critically acclaimed and people love it It'll be fine. Yeah, I did see some some of the hardcore Pikmin fans complaining about some of the story stuff and all that. I mean, I, I, it's not how it's like retconning certain things or something. I've never paid attention to Pikmin story. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I mean, the characters are too stupid for me to like, even like take them seriously. <laughs> like they're like little minuscule micro organisms. This is just uh, you're carrying fruit and crap. So I just never really took this. Took the. I guess there's a big story there in some. Hey, chat. Let me know. Stealth. Do you know anything about this incredible story? that Pikmin has? I mean, it has a story, but, you know, at its base, you crash down on a planet, you collect stuff, and, and, and you beat, and you collect Pikmin, and you beat up on enemies. That's basically it. Yeah. Um, I, it's, it's not super, I mean, it's not super complicated where you need, like, an encyclopedia. Well, apparently, no, there's some, like, hardcore Pikmin people that, like, go into oh, the lore of, like, Pikmin, yeah. and they were upset with, like, Pikmin 4 apparently messing with some things. So, I don't know, man. I, so, maybe maybe that's the reason. Maybe some of some reviewers are like, oh, they're hardcore Pikmin people that know the that know the story. I mean, but I've never thought to even understand or know the story of Pikmin. I, I don't care. Like, they're just... It's, <laughs> so, anyway, we'll see, though. We, we will see. Um, all right, good stuff there. Uh, we are going to get into uh, another thing that you um, that you brought up, um, stealth. I wrote it down, but then for some reason, I thought I wrote it down, but I don't have it written down. But I think I have your tweet pulled up. So we've got Sting the Wrestler announcing new video game. No, I'm joking, guys. Uh, so stealth had a tweet on this. Completely reminded me about it. That's why he's a good co-host. Um, announcing some RPGs coming out. Um, how do you say the name, stealth? Maybe you can do this. You can do this segment. Yeah, um, and I'm not going to promise I'm going to pronounce the name the right way, but Yigidra Union. Yigidra Maybe Union. it's different. Yigidra okay. Union. Okay. We'll, um, we'll, you know, we'll never fight alone. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, it's a GBA RPG classic. Um, and it's been it's being released on the West and the eShop. Um, yes. So, um, it's a very interesting looking game. I'm going to put up the, the screenshots here. So, Stealth, do you know, like, have you played this game before in any type of way, shape, or form? I do. I have it on the Game Boy Advance, and then I bought it again on the PSP. Um, so, it's been released a few times now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it started on the Game Boy Advance, was ported to the PSP with extra content, and now it's being ported to Switch with even more quality of life stuff. Um, and the thing about this that's kind of exciting is, um, you know, Sting has been releasing their, their back catalog of games on Switch for, like, the last couple of years, but it's been Japan only. They've released, you know, Gloria Union, Blaze Union, Knights in the Nightmare, just, a, like, different Game Boy Advance and DS games. Um, Baroque, which is one of their first games that was ported to Wii, um, all Japan only. And then out of the blue, a couple days ago, it just pops up on the on the USC shop, um, and then there and it's coming out um, 
I want to say next week. Um, I, I know I tweeted about it right underneath or the uh, release date, if you have that up. Um, um, yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah, I know. No, it doesn't say the release date on here. Yeah, on, on, on the tweet underneath. Yeah, I um, looked at the tweet underneath. Um, yeah, I had a couple. Um, but either way, it's it's twenty four ninety nine. Um, so yeah, it's not like the a full price game or anything. But yeah, it's, it's just a fun classic RPG. I've been hoping that Sting would localize their Switch games, and they hadn't been until now. So it's it's, it's definitely exciting. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that for games like this. This would have been super cool to play back in like the GBA days. Like if you just had it, yeah. you know, and it was just, it would have been super cool for that. I didn't get a chance to play it, but it's definitely one of those games that I'll probably pick up. I like the, the aesthetics of this game is super cool. Like I love yeah. the different, I just like how like the, all the different stuff that's coming at you in this game. It seems like the fonts and everything just seems super GBA-ish, you know? Like I love, I love that style. So it's like a part, is it like a dungeon crawler too? Like I saw like a little map, like you kind of go through like. I... No, it's, it's actually a pure strategy RPG. Okay, pure strategy um, RPG. But there is a map there. But yeah, I mean, Sting was known for, you know, flashy visuals um you know and really unique mechanics um but you know they haven't really put out any major original games in a very long time they they, they do games for other developers now mm -hmm. um so this is kind of a, a relic um but a very cool one nice nice all right so i think they said they uh somebody in the chat ten thousand news says ig 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 igra is it igra is that how you say it i don't know Igra, Igra, Igra Union, Igra Igra Union. Union. I don't know what I was saying. Either, either, no, yeah. I, look, I had no answer. I, I have no idea, but it looks pretty cool. It should be coming out yeah. pretty soon here. Um, it's already out in Japan. So, um, so if you know Japanese or if you feel like playing, just go get it right away. Get yourself an eShop card somehow. Um, all right, good stuff, man. It's always good to see some, like, it just once again kind of adds, you know, we've talked about this before about the Switch being like the best Nintendo system of all time. And it's like, not saying like, this is the game that tips it over the scales, but it's part of the reason why. Like, it's like the yeah. the vast like wealth of games that you can play, like so many different types of games. Like the variety is like insane, you know? Yeah, and I mean, I'm hoping that like Limited Run will pick it up for a physical edition. Like I would buy it again physically um, if, if, if they did that. So I'm kind of campaigning for that. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, it's not like the game that pushes it over the top, but it's just like another good RPG, mm -hmm. you know? It's like another good option if you're just looking for something else. Yeah. And, you know, the classics coming back, obviously, like, anything that's, like, handheld, a lot of those are not modern. Like, uh, there are so many GBA games and so many games from the past that just yeah. are stuck. And then this reminds me, I got to spring a new topic on you. Okay. Um, we didn't talk about this, but uh, NIS America um, launched their 30th anniversary site. Mm -hmm. um, and they have three unannounced games on there. Three unannounced games for NIS America. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, sorry. Um, NAS Japan. Okay, NAS Japan. Um, okay. But it, it'll, it'll, and, and, and I'm sure NAS America will pick them up. Yes. Um, but the, I mean, but the fact is, NAS Japan has three unannounced games. Um, probably all coming to Switch. Probably something we'll be talking about once they get announced. But just wanted to throw that out there. Nice. Um, nice. Uh, there's even more probably coming. Okay. Okay. Um, NIS America, they have like a hundred games on the Switch. I'm exaggerating, yeah. but like. They have so many. They've been one of the best developers on there. And obviously, they've, they've reaped the benefits of it. I think this is the most yeah. profitable they've been in their history, if I'm not correct. Uh, they've published over 40 games on Switch, probably closer to 50 plus. Yeah. Um, More than any other Nintendo system combined times four. Yeah. Um, they, they only released a couple games on DS, a couple games on Wii, maybe one game on 3ds and that was it um so they exploded on switch yeah absolutely so that money's coming from somewhere um shout outs to my man uh wolgon scout thank you for the uh, new subscription i do appreciate that do appreciate it so let's go ahead and let's jump into this next topic as well which kind of i guess it's not really a topic but it's more of another game announcement uh that you brought up the from the bit summit the Umbra Claw yeah. game. So, uh, Stell, tell us a little bit more about this Umbra Claw game. Looks interesting for sure, and I'll put up some pictures while you, you talk about it. Yeah, so um, Inti Creates, as most people know, um, they, they were formed from ex-Capcom staff 
um, they developed the Mega Man Zero games on um, the Game Boy Advance, and then they, you know, started developing their own stuff. And they're like a fantastic 2D action developer. I'm sure you've all heard of um, Azure Striker and Luminous Avenger and um, mm -hmm. and Dragon Mark for Death. And they just released Gal Guardian. So they've been pretty prolific on this generation uh, of systems in terms of 2D action games. Curse of the Moon. Um, they've released a lot of 2D action games, Blaster Master, and this is their newest game. Um, first announced a couple months ago, I think probably more than that, for just PC. Um, it's another 2D action game, stars a cat, uh, Black Cat, um, I don't know the cat's name. Um, and it just looks like a very cool, another 2D action game. And it was announced at Bit Summit that it's coming to Switch, um, which is great. Um, they didn't announce any other platform, so it might be Switch console exclusive for a bit. But normally, if um, Indie Creates does a Switch console exclusive at first, it comes to everything later. Um, so I'm not going to pretend like it's going to be a Switch exclusive because it's probably not going to be. Um, but it's just a very cool, you know, indie action game coming out of Japan from a very established team. Yeah, I, I see here with Inti Crates, obviously they've made some awesome stuff here, but the cat transforms. The, ca does, the, yeah. <laughs> the cat can transform. I, I actually played the trailer, um, you know, uh, and I think everything just went down. Hold up. Okay, there we go. I think I think we're back. Uh, but yeah, the cat just, uh, the, the cat, you get a power up and the cat just starts going wild on people. So yeah, that's definitely, like you can see the Inti Crates style, like in terms of like the level design and everything. Um, in yeah. terms of all that, so yeah, that's and, you awesome, know, I man. appreciate how you know it's one thing to innovate, um, but Into Creates knows exactly what they're good at, and then and they never deviate too far. So you're never gonna see Into Creates, you know, doing a sports game. Um, 2D action is what they're very good at. So you know, keep it coming. That's what I say yeah you know the, the funniest thing about this is like the cat revolution has is, like yeah. has like been has been a thing there's been so many cats you know cat games that have came about at this point it's it's very interesting for sure very 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 yeah, very I'm interesting sure if you asked it into creates they were definitely like looking at stray and we're <laughs> thinking you know what we got to make a cat game yeah yeah absolutely absolutely cat games or that they're, they're all they're all the rage at this point but no this game actually looks pretty good looks pretty good some people yeah. say it kind of reminds them of okami a little bit and stuff like that so yeah overall cool cool stuff man um all right so we're gonna go ahead and jump into the uh next topic here before we get into questions remember guys uh if you want your question answered you can go on the discord um and uh check out the sidebar where it says uh players across nintendo questions Put your question in there we'll try to do our best to answer those questions first um so if you're not a member of the discord you can always become a member um sign up via patreon you'll have the discord link on there or you can sign up right here on youtube hit the join button um and of course any support if it's super chat or if it's like a stream labs we will answer your questions through that as well so this last topic that we're going to get to unless you have another topic you want to get into stealth um yokai watch the 10th anniversary this is this is like bittersweet for me because it's like or it's like it's I, i'm happy but i'm like is this going to even be localized so they, they they were teasing a new yokai watch game in japan saying that there's something that they're working on uh, but uh, this game the last game that we got was back in like what was it 20 was it 2017 or 2018 i forgot when yokai watch 4 launched um Oh no, there was a game even after that, but it was like Japan only. But either way, a lot of the games, a lot of the most recent games have not came over from Japan. Um, but what do you think that this new game is going to be like? Ultimately, do you think it's going to be them really trying to get Yokai Watch back into the you know worldwide brand like they did with Yokai Watch 1 and 2? Or is it going to be something that's kind of like relegated to Japan, maybe a smaller end game after what happened with Yokai Watch 4? Um so I, I do think the game's probably gonna be yokai watch 5. okay um, that big huh i do yeah okay and i do think it'll be localized because you know as as you know we we, we both watched the level 5 vision event yeah and every game they showed is being localized and and they've, and they've said like it, it's important to them now that every game comes out in the west um so 
while I think maybe Yokai Watch 4 died for this. Um, I, I think it died so Yokai Watch 5 could be localized. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> I had to sneeze and laugh at the same time. Can admit, I couldn't mute my mic fast enough. Um, yeah, man. Um, I, you know, I, I want to share that. I, I'm hoping that's the case, but you're right about that. Like back in the day, the deck of police might have been a game that they didn't localize or it's like oh well you know it's gonna be in japan first and then it comes out later here in the u.s right so the fact that it, it's a that that they are really having this strong push towards um localization is good um yokai watch 5 would be wild because what is it gonna be is it going to be a continuation of the action rpg or are they gonna go back to yokai watch like how it was with yokai watch 1 2 and 3 yeah, and, and it still kills me that we didn't get Yokai Watch 4, because even though it changed, it was a very good game. Yeah. Um, and Yokai Watch 3 is like one of the most expensive, rare 3DS games. Mm -hmm. It goes for like almost $500. Um, just a little 3DS cartridge. Yeah. Um, for that. So, yeah, it'd be great to have like a new Yokai Watch um, released everywhere. Yeah. Do you think it's going to be a turn based RPG? No. Um, I think it'll probably continue what what Yokai Watch Four did. Really, after the after what happened? Yeah, I, I do. Um, and I, I like Yokai Watch Four. Um, and Yokai Watch Four Plus Plus is apparently like one of the best Switch RPGs. We just never got it. Oh, that um, makes me so. Because you can tell that it's a high quality game just by looking yeah. at it. Yeah. And like people who, I mean, if you can play it, if you really want to play it, you can play it. Um, it's just not I, I don't know if there's a if there's a english patch at all or anything like that I, I there might be but you know i don't think it's gonna be like easy to download or anything you know yeah but you know i think first before we get that yokai watch announcement whatever it is we we, we have to get the other stuff um you know deck of police gotta yes. get a release date for that uh fantasy life um we know Layton is 2024 um and yokai watch is probably gonna be 2024 too that's what i think yeah, Deca Police is interesting. I think we can talk about that just, to, or I want to talk about it just a little bit. There's no release date for that yet. We're already. Is, is that getting delayed to next year? I don't think so. Don't think um, so? Okay. I, I think we'll get another trailer during the September Nintendo Direct. Okay, and then an announcement. Or like really... December. I think oh. it'll release in December. You think it's going to be a December game? I do. Well, it's cutting it close then. I mean, it's, cu yeah. it's cutting it close. Yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah. Um, and then. Uh, I think in his, I think I think we'll see like the level five stuff at the September direct. In Zoom Eleven needs a release date too. I want to play that game badly. Um, but yeah, I think Deca Police is still gonna make this. It looked pretty much done to me. Um, it looked like a finished game. Yeah. So I think we'll hear more about that. I can't wait. That's a day one That's purchase if I ever super, saw one. Super day one. It looks insanely. It looks so polished. It looks so polished and good. It does. It looks like, okay, this is what the Nino Kuni team might have been doing. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it might be those guys yeah, it, and ladies. It, it, um, it, it feels that way, yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it, it has, like, an aura of, like, that when you first saw Nino Kuni 1. Like, I remember when I did, when, when yeah. I first saw Nino Kuni 1, I was like, whoa. Or, like, when you first saw Dark Cloud, you're like, whoa, what's this? You know, like, the art style, the, the, the you know, the gameplay. Everything just seems super fresh, despite us seeing a million RPGs at this point, you know? Yeah, that 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 I'm I'm buying that immediately. Yeah, are you um, buying it on Switch or you get it on PlayStation or both or? Uh, this is the dilemma. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I know it's gonna run better on PlayStation, obviously, yeah. but I feel like I don't know. I feel compelled to support RPGs on Switch because I feel like developers are looking for any excuse not to port them. Yeah. So I feel like I have to buy them. Yeah. Um, well, I'll probably support. I'll probably get a Switch version. This is where like I I, I hate no cross progression or like cross yeah. saves. Like I this I get it, and MVG said it's difficult, but this stuff is like you need to do this. Like this is where yeah. like it needs to be done. Like Octopath, it needed to be done. Like I, this needs to happen. Ubisoft has figured this out. Out of all companies, Ubisoft has figured this out. When I got. Uh, they gave me a review copy of what was it? Uh, what's that game? That Zelda type game? Um, Phoenix. Um, yeah, uh, Phoenix Rising. Yeah, Phoenix Rising Immortals or something. Rise. I forgot the yeah. exact name, but you guys know in the chat. Like, it, it's completely cross save. 
you go on the little Ubisoft thing, you upload your save file to the Ubisoft thing, you pick it on the main menu. It's very easy. Immortals Phoenix Rising, that's the name. Thank you so much, Ethan. Um, it's very easy for cross save. They, they figured it out. So whatever technology that is, if there's a, a server hub or something, you upload your save, you just download it. it. It needs to be done, man. It needs to be done. But Ubisoft has kind of been on the, 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 the forefront on stuff like that. I mean, they, they have like their whole achievement system. They have their old reward point system that's tied to everything, like every game that you play, you know? So they've been doing that cross save, cross points, cross Ubisoft account thing for I think more than a decade now. Not saves, but like when it comes to everything else. Like I remember doing that stuff like that and God, what game was it? I think it was, I think it was a Wii games as well. I know it was like Wii U, Wii U, Splinter Cell Blacklist, stuff like that in Splinter Cell Blacklist, like on the Wii U. Um, so, oh man, whatever it is, what it is. Um, yeah, I really want cross save, man. Cause then I'll just cop a PS5 version, you know, and play that whenever I feel like playing it on the TV. And then Obviously, if I go out somewhere, if I just want to play lying down in the living room or in bed, I can just play my, my Switch version and have the... I mean, like, it's it's a legitimate business plan, in my opinion. <laughs> like, I think there's more people that would do that than maybe what is, you know, people think, you know? But, you know, but it, is, it is what it is. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully Yokai Watch 4 gets announced soon. Or, sorry, Yokai Watch 5, and it's localized, and everything's good there. I really, I really hope people, you know, come out and support deck of police and the new latent game and the make a ton Mus that make a ton musashi game looks pretty good too it's fun too uh, yeah it looks really fun um so yeah hope people support it yeah i mean it's, it's important to support level five now yeah um like now's the time to do it if, if, if you ever had reservations don't because <laughs> yeah. if, if this isn't successful man i'm pretty sure unless somebody comes in and saves them they're gonna they're gonna they might go out of business like if this because like it's not cheap to localize games and level five isn't a big massive publisher developer or anything i mean you know they, they made a lot of money in the yokai watch days which i still think that they have that money or at least they've been using that money and they made a lot of money off was it like a mobile game that they made a ton of money off of uh, i forgot exactly i think it was like a nino kuni mobile um, there was something yeah they there. had one i don't know if that made a ton of money i know they had a fantasy life a fantasy mobile life too. mobile or something but yeah uh they need to do well so i'm i'm a, I, i've been big on deck of police you know i use it in my thumbnails a lot you know if i'm talking about the game so yeah let's hope uh, and let's hope yokai watch comes back because at one point yokai watch to me seemed like it, it can this challenge pokemon i know it sounds crazy not at this point but i'm telling you there was a yokai watch fever in the mid 2010s right before yokai watch 2 came out you know it was like okay this could be the next big thing and then it just fell off the face of the earth <laughs> like i've never seen a fall so hard before man which was wild because like yokai watch 2 sold like didn't that sell like oof, sold over 5 million in japan if i'm not correct i know it sold yeah it sold a huge amount yeah it sold really well in japan on 3ds so um all right so i'm gonna open up um the discord here and take some questions so we'll get through those and then we'll wrap up the podcast. Uh, questions are always fun. So once again, if you have a question, feel free to go on the Discord if you're a member and uh, ask the questions there. Um, let me get to it here. I, I gotta go on my I gotta go on my phone because I can't use my PC for that. So give me just a second here, guys, and we'll go over questions. All right. So um, we're gonna go back. Uh, Luano, I didn't answer this one here. Um, but this was from last week, so I'll answer it now. Uh, Luano Z says, What games do you think we'll see in the launch year of the Switch 2? My guess is that Nintendo, uh, Nintendo's plan is to replicate the Switch's launch year as much as possible. Um, it's a good question. I, I don't know. I don't, it's hard to predict the whole year. Um, I'm pretty confident that it's going to launch with um, the next 3D Mario. And I think it's going to launch with Metroid Prime 4. And that's going to be cross also with Switch. Um, so 3D Mario, Metroid Prime, and then some third-party games, which we can't really know now. Probably some ports. So you think 3D, like, where do you think Mario Kart fits in? Do you think Mario Kart's in the first year, or do you think that's... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it might be the next month. Next month. So they do the whole... 
Zelda Breath of the Wild slash Mario yeah. Kart 8. Yeah. That's a that's a surefire way to get people excited. Have like big 3D Mario and then a month later, oh snap, Mario Kart's coming. Like that I think that almost guarantees success. Like, there's never been a time in Nintendo's history where they've done something like that and it hasn't been successful outside in terms of like, you know, hyping up outside of like I think maybe the Wii U. I know that they did Super, uh, Super Mario 3D Land or Super Mario 3D World and then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was a little bit after that. But I mean, if you, what was the number? It was like, it was like a, a half year after that. It was like 2013 to 2014. Yeah, it was May 2014 for Mario Kart 8. And then it was November 2013 for Super Mario 3D World. Um, but the Wii U was already in trouble at that point. Um, but if you launch a system with 3D Mario and Mario Kart, that's, that's, that's wild. <laughs> that's, that's, that's super wild. So yeah. yeah. I, and probably probably like a deluxe version of tears of the kingdom too yeah um yeah. Pro probably that too yeah th that seems to be to make sense to just enhance it a bit and release it as a patch or you can just like repackage it and say here's the game maybe if there's dlc at that point you put the yeah. dlc on there um so yeah there's definitely a number of ways i think they're gonna do something like that as well um next question comes from style boys um and says um the question towards stealth what are your thoughts about people wanting persona to get out the high school setting and transition into college i ask uh i ask because john from spawn we've addressed how he wanted persona to lean into different territory and if persona 6 were to go down that route would it hurt the game's sales for people who enjoyed the more high school plot appreciate both hard work you two uh, do for the community yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it'd be a good idea to, to do a college kind of story and setting. It's something that you don't get a lot of. Um, so I kind of like that idea. Um, I don't know if Persona 6 is going to do it. Um, but yeah, I'd be perfectly okay with it. Um, you know, I like Persona 3. I like Persona 4. I like Persona 5. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would have welcomed a change. You know, I, and I don't see how it can be much different, like, from what they already do. Like, college... Persona yeah, 5 I mean, it is would rated... just be a different setting. It would, it would be a different setting, and I guess, you know, the character tropes would be similar. Um, it would just be the environment would be I mean, hopefully different. Yeah, I mean, they, they would have to aesthetically, I mean, obviously change things, but I mean, like, when it comes to college, or like, Persona's already a mature rated game. You know, it's it's already, it's rated, Persona 5 is rated M. Um, so, you know, in terms of, like, the themes and what they can do, uh, they can already do a lot of stuff that they want, but obviously, yes, the setting of high school, um, I guess. I mean, if they change it, they can change it. Um, I'd be interested to see what they can do with it, though. I'd be very interested to see, you know, what what they do with uh, that 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 setting and, and and all of that. So if they went to college, um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of similar to what they what they do now. I mean, uh, you. I mean, obviously, you'd have like you have like first year, second year, third year. So I mean, you'd have to make people look a bit older, right? Because you're dealing from. And sometimes college has people that are older than, you know, 23, 24, 25. So, I mean, I don't know. It, it could be interesting to see um, for sure. Uh, so Mr. Super says he wants Persona in the hood. So, there you go. I need Persona in the hood next. Uh, <laughs> next up is from uh, Monado Mario. It says, question to Stealth. Have you seen the article on Game Rant where the writer uses Xenoblade Chronicles 3 to argue that there's a double standard with Final Fantasy 16 shifting the battle uh, gameplay from traditional RPG to action? What are your thoughts about this? Yeah, real quick before you answer this stuff, I have a video that I'm going to, I've just been forgetting, I've been putting it off, but I'm definitely going to rip this article to shreds just because I think it's funny. Uh, but Stealth, go ahead. Have you seen that article? I have. Okay. Um, I think it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, you know... Xenoblade Chronicles 3 has a very complex battle system. You got six characters, you can control them all. You have, you know, over 20 classes with different moves and customization. Um, so it's extremely complex in that way, more so than any other Xenoblade game. Um, and it's not like Xenoblade 1 was like fully turn-based and then they changed it to something more action. It's, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 has a very similar battle system to 2. So it so it's not really super different. So it's not like you know there there wouldn't be outrage. 
um, going from two to three. Yeah, I don't understand what this person. This is the biggest reach that I've ever seen. And like I said, I, I will have a, or I will have a video talking about this more. But like Xenoblade One, Xenoblade Two, and Xenoblade Three literally all follow the same cadence. You auto attack. You wait for stuff to fill up, right? Or you can manipulate things to fill up and then you execute arts, then you execute arts. Now, what you do surrounding that has changed. Has been, I mean, sometimes you have a big mech, you know? But even when you're in the mech, it's the same how you play when you're on the ground. You just have access to different things. Xenoblade Chronicles 3, same thing, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. You, you attack, you fill up the meters, and then you do an art. Or you, yeah. then you activate a combo. Like, that, 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 doing the same base gameplay has been in all of the games, where you do stuff, you get you act you you activate status effects you you know you break them you topple them they added days was in the first one then in the second one they added you know launch and then smash right so and then like they added uh what was a burst um so i don't understand this this yeah. is such a weird uh, comparison i mean i'm sure if xenoblade chronicles 3 had only one playable character you'd see a lot of the same pushback yeah um for me, I mean, I, I guess, you know, I'd, be, I'd have a big problem with that. Me too. Um, but the battle system is more complex, and there's like 25 classes, and you can mix and match amongst six characters. It's So it's it's more of what Xenoblade fans wanted, and it's better. Yeah. So it's good. Um, and that's not to say that Final Fantasy 16 is bad or no, anything no. like that, but, you know, I didn't exactly, and I, and I love the game, I didn't you know, I would have preferred multiple playable characters and things like that, um, you know, in, in that game. So, yeah, and I don't know why you'd want to compare it to Xenoblade, which has really only built on the battle system as we've gone along here. So, so yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't get it, but I'll have a more in-depth breakdown kind of line by line. Uh, this th That is a, I don't think the, the person has played Xenoblade like that much. I don't think they really under, like a lot of people might play Xenoblade, but they don't understand Xenoblade. Especially a lot of journalists, they put it on the easy mode and they just let things go wild, right? So I, I'm pretty sure that's what this person did. Because if you play Xenoblade 3 on the easy mode, it can seem pretty wildly different from Xenoblade 2 if you play that at launch or Xenoblade 1 or Xenoblade X. Like it can seem very different, um, you know, for some people. So I'm thinking maybe that's what's happening there. Um, Style Boys has another question. He says, uh, there has been many weird rumblings on saying Sony should buy Square Enix as a retaliation to the Microsoft uh, Activism Blizzard acquisition. Why is that that people think uh, a Japanese video game company should be bought? Is there a double standard when it comes to people reacting to video game acquisitions too? Uh, what's your thoughts on that, Stel? I'm sorry, I think I cut out for a second. Can you repeat that? Okay, yeah, no problem. Um, there have been uh, many weird... So he's basically asking, uh, people have been saying that Square Enix should uh or micro or sorry sony should buy square enix as a retaliation to activision blizzard like why do people want this like it, it, as retaliation like is it's, it's like it's pretty weird right is that's what he's asking yeah i mean first of all like the people who say that aren't really fans of square enix i've noticed because those people will say you know square enix is basically a subsidiary of sony anyway all they do is sony exclusives which is just false and ridiculous like that's what i see most of the time and it's just obvious that they don't play Square Enix games other than Final Fantasy, and that's it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just nonsense. Square Enix is best independent. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't mind. It, if... it wouldn't It wouldn't be a good... It would not be a good thing if Sony bought them, if anybody bought them. I agree. And nobody should be... Don't even get me started on it. I've, my blood pressure's already getting high <laughs> from this question. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody should... I mean... I, listen i'm not a fan of everybody just buying up stuff like people microsoft buying people talk about the activism blizzard microsoft buying activism blizzard isn't better for anybody but people who are invested into into microsoft's ecosystem it's not better for everybody i mean people want to sit there and say it's better for no it's not it's not better for everybody it's better for people that are invested into microsoft's ecosystem and if you're invested into that okay yeah that's great for you or if you want bragging rights online now i don't care if they want to do it go ahead do it nobody can stop them right but or at least <laughs> they tried to stop them they did it um but having all these companies be bought up is not great for that like you know like rare being bought up was not great you know like there's been countless examples of uh companies that have been bought up and not doing great you know so yeah i mean look at embracer group they bought up a million companies 
they didn't have any hits fast enough, and they had to let go of a lot of people and break apart teams, and it yeah. was a disaster. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, for me, it's just yeah, it, it it is what it is on that one. You know, I, I think it's weird, um, and I don't think it's better for for the consumers when a bunch of like yeah. first party companies are gonna you know buy up all these studios or buy up all these pu publishers. Not even studios. Like a studio is one thing, but a publisher is a whole other thing. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll always stand on the side of publisher, developer, independence. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, somebody, Monaro says, look at like EA. Like, yeah, like EA has bought so much stuff and things have just... Bioware, how's Bioware looking these days? Yeah, it, like EA will, it's like good at the beginning and then it eventually just crashes and burns. Like, that's what EA, like that. that's what I noticed with EA's acquisitions. Like, it was Mass Effect 2, great, but man, by three, three, okay, good. Andromeda was a complete nightmare. And this is that, that we got three Mass Effect games in a span of five years. We've had one Mass Effect game in the past uh, six years. So, yeah. And we got more than that. If you count the mobile games and other games, like we had more than that with Mass Effect. But you guys see what I'm saying. Like EA's acquisition of them, yeah, BioWare turned out turned out disastrous so yeah i think i think if bioware just stayed i know it was like microsoft game studio like but it was like i don't think microsoft owned them i think microsoft just published their game so bioware was independent like imagine if bioware would just be able like just be mercenaries and hired out and people just give them mass amounts to make the next mass effect like, mass effect would still be good in today's day because they would have never used that crusty frostbite engine and ruined everything that <laughs> mass effect would still be going strong today if it wasn't for ea getting in there um anyway that's my own i love mass effect and ea ruined it somewhat um all right so let's see here next question comes from j2 blue tunes says do you think tears of the kingdom will stay number one for the rest of the year in the u.s eShop? for the rest of the year i don't think so um it, it i mean it's gonna draw i mean i think it's i think i think Pikmin four is gonna debut at number one mm. um and then obviously Super Mario Brothers Wonder is gonna hit number one. Yep. Um, I think Super Mario RPG has a chance. At Super Mario RPG one has too. a big chance. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, yeah, there's just no way. Uh, unfortunately, like new games will sell better than a months old game. That's just the way it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I, I hear what you say. Monado Mario says the double standard I meant is that some people don't want Activision Blizzard to be bought, but they want Sony to buy a JP video game company. Yeah, that's just like the console war fanboy stuff. It's it's not. Yeah, I, don't, I don't want anyone to be bought. Yeah, it's just it's just console war fanboy stuff. Um, so, so yeah. Um, next up is from Uncario, and he says, "What Nintendo IP uh, would you like to see an indie take on, and what genre slash type of game?" Would you would you like it to be example Cadence of Hyrule making a 2D Zelda rhythm game? Anything that you want to see indie with the Nintendo IP? Um, I mean, I think Way Forward could make a new Advance Wars game. Yeah, yeah. I think they, they could. They did a pretty good um, job. I, guess, I don't know if Way Forward is considered indie. Yeah, um, they're an independent company, but they also do big contracts like to make games with publishers so they're published but yeah they're they're an indie company you know i mean i would love to see like yacht club do something i, I think they could do like a 2d platformer with some nintendo franchise maybe splatoon or something yeah um like a sprite based 2d a sprite based 2d platformer with, with splatoon i think yacht club would knock it out of the park um yeah i mean i think you know most developers would probably jump at the chance to like tackle an IP like that because it's instant sales most of the time. Oh yeah, I bet they get all sorts of. I mean, we've seen over the years if you watch like Didn't You Know Gaming and just like they, they get pitches for even within their own studios. Like Retro Studios, they pitch so much stuff to them and like, other other companies. Uh, I think uh, Intelligent Systems pitched Earthbound, you know, at one point, right? So yeah, absolutely. Um, I would like to see. This is gonna throw a curveball here. I would like to see uh, Marisama's Castle brought back, yeah. like in just like a two D action adventure game, like a, just but from an indie company. I mean, Yacht Club could do it, Sabotage could do it. The people that made Messenger, um, oh my God, there's so many people that can do like a cool two D 
Mirasame Castle, if I'm saying that correctly, brought, bring that back. Just $20, $30 eShop game. I would love for that to, to be a thing, you know? So that would be that would be my uh, indie game to bring back. Just an old, crusty franchise that's... I don't think that game was localized. It wasn't until all the way to, like, the 3DS eShop, I think that game was... It wasn't even localized back in the day. Um, no. So, yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. Uh, Noral Dean with the next question, and he says... OJ, have, uh, you said that that the acquisition of Square Enix would greatly affect. Uh, you said the acquisition, the acquisition of Square Enix would greatly affect Nintendo, which I agree with. I I, I didn't say that. Um, was wondering, Stealth, what do you think of this scenario? I, I didn't say that. Yesterday there was somebody, and before I let Stealth get into this, yesterday there was somebody saying that, um, oh, it would be a major blow, and I said, yeah, it would definitely be a, a, a blow, but Nintendo would still be just fine. They could still sell a ton of systems because Square Enix. They don't have like a bunch of like 10 million sellers or anything like you know on there so i, I think it would be uh, it definitely be affect nintendo but it's not going to be like a major effect that's what i was saying um because they put out so many games on the switch so I, I i didn't say that there was somebody else saying that in the chat uh, the other day um but stealth what, what is your thoughts man yeah i mean yeah it would suck <laughs> i mean as a primary switch rpg buyer i mean obviously sony in a hypothetical situation probably wouldn't let them release games on switch anymore mm -hmm. um they might not release any like mid-level games anymore you know potentially you know team asano could be affected um so yeah just it, yeah i mean it would definitely you know i see people saying like sony should do it as revenge for microsoft but it wouldn't affect microsoft at all it would affect nintendo um but yeah obviously i said it before i'll say it again square should be independent and then that's it yeah, I, I just I don't understand what buying Square Enix does for for Sony. Like I don't I don't I don't get like all the games that released. Valk, maybe if Valkyrie Elysium was a ten million seller, or like a five million seller. If Star Ocean: The Divine Force just blew it away on on PlayStation. If what else did they they released so many games. If Dio Field blew up on PlayStation. If all of those games blew up on play if live alive blew up on playstation then i'd say you know what there's a legitimate reason look at all this stuff you can get all these things and maybe it'd be something for you but none of those did they sold terrible not terrible but they didn't sell good they, they didn't sell good valkyrie elysium was a flop it, it was a flop it was they, they brought it back and they tried to say here we go playstation only and it was a flop so i don't know man it, to me it doesn't really make sense um at all all square enix or all sony seems to be interested in is final fantasy they can have that exclusive to the detriment of final fantasy final fantasy is not better off it being exclusive on yeah. playstation but that's what sony wants they're gonna spend a bunch of money square enix is willing to reap the future of their own franchise in terms of sales and and popularity to have exclusivity with one company okay that's fine you want to do that but a lot of other games that you grew up with are lapping you in sales. Monster Hunter, Resident Evil is now getting bigger. Like a lot of other franchises are getting way bigger than Square Enix is with console-based Final Fantasy games. So you can do whatever you want with your with your franchise. But if Square Enix, if they want to do that. But to me, I don't think that benefits really anybody. I don't think, like I said, I think it's a it sucks, like Stealth says. But I don't think it's like the death blow or anything. Um, and I don't think Sony even cares about anything outside of final fantasy like you know I, I just don't think they care um so that's just me um all right next question comes from dank meme center x it says is there any reason why marketing approach are vastly different from games within a publisher dragon quest treasure to pc um mark like dragon quest treasures to pc i think they just did it because they wanted to right dragon quest treasure on pc like in terms of the marketing they just released the game on pc i don't know yeah they just shadow dropped it yeah oh okay i think he means like why they didn't talk about it more oh, because it's not a big game like it's not gonna sell crazy numbers on pc like they already did a big marketing cycle for the switch version which that's the version that's gonna sell the most so there was no point in really yeah and they have an actual dragon quest monsters game coming out in a couple of months yeah i think they're just kind of like yeah here's here's this here's this game right yeah. on pc so just like whisper here's this game on pc okay all right okay let's talk about dragon quest monsters dark prince you know so yeah i don't think they're really too worried because they know i mean they know like they look at the numbers i mean pc it's good but it's not they don't, you're not gonna sell a ton of copies of dragon quest treasures so there's no point in putting money into the marketing of dragon quest treasures on pc they, they they held a live stream 
That's about all you need to do. Um, <laughs> Dank Meme with another question says, another one... What canceled project would uh, would you like to see be revived from a studio today? Raven Blade, Raven Blade from Retro Studios for me. Um, any canceled IP you like to see brought back still? Um, I can't really think of any off the top of my head. Okay. I guess they, I guess they must not have been that important if I can't think of one. <laughs> So what about like let me try to see if i can pull up one or think of one because there's been a lot of, like if you watch did you know gaming there's been a lot of canceled you know games uh there was a, a shika a chic game that starred like the last um that that was or, like a chic tactics game too would you like to see something like that brought back or something along the lines of that um all right actually there is one i can think of okay um this was on the 3ds and let's see if, how many people remember this um, Inafune, uh, Kenji Inafune announced this like penguin pirate oh, game yes, RPG. I remember. Uh, <laughs> all right, I, I would have wanted to play that. The, the thing about that game is that the, the, the DS was lacking, or the 3DS was lacking games at the time, so people were kind of like, I actually got some hype for that game. Yeah. <laughs> Mega Man, everyone here is probably gonna say next Mega Man Legends 3. You know, uh, Mega Man Legends 3 for sure. Um, all right, uh, and Noral Dean also um, confirmed he meant to say uh, he meant to say that I I thought that it wouldn't greatly affect. So yeah, I agree, Noral Dean. He just meant to say I wouldn't in the Square Enix situation. So yeah. Um, next up is from J Two Blue again, and he says, "What do you think um, that next level? Uh, like, what do you think that next level game's next game will be?" Some are speculating that the new uh, Peach game is being made by them. Ooh, that's that's interesting. If that game is because it has kind of like a look of luigi's mansion and they announced it right next to the luigi's mansion dark moon port i mean what do you think stealth princess peach game made by uh next level i mean it's possibly next level or yeah. it could be internal like a different internal nintendo team yeah um you know next levels for sure gonna work on luigi's mansion 4 for the next system oh yeah um I'd love to see Punch Out. Come. I'd I'd love to see a new Punch Out. Mm. A new Punch Out with a with a little bit of a different graphical style to it, or something like that, or yeah, and that same all new characters. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, it's just, Nintendo has to navigate today's uh, <laughs> today's waters to to, to do a game. <laughs> well, yeah. No, I mean I, it's it's a legitimate. You know, I, I yeah. think Nintendo could get. I mean, if it's just silly enough. I don't yeah. think it'd be that bad, you know. But... Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's been a long time since, since I played the Wii version. Was there any questionable? Uh, thing about that? yeah, there's some things that might piss some people off. I mean, you never know in today's day, right? Like yeah. French dude, he knocked the baguettes out of him. You know, oh, he's a wuss. He's a sissy. Uh, really, like, I don't know what to say. I don't want guys. Don't take offense to this, but like. A really flamboyant gay black guy i mean you know like I, I, I don't know if he's gay but i'm just saying like disco kitty like the way that he acts right like <laughs> you know stuff like that I, I don't think it's too bad though like you know uh soda popinski or what like uh you know the way he's all a, a drunk russian guy you know like yeah. russians always drink it's just I mean, stuff like maybe that you just, maybe you just do something completely different where like all the characters are dressed up like animals or something and they <laughs> fight like the animals or something crazy <laughs> But you know that'd be so lame. It'd be cool. The game would play it would be lame. <laughs> yeah, but it would be different. I think there's a way that they could redo it um, yeah. without being offensive. Hopefully, there there is a way, and I think that the way that you do it is that you, I think that I don't think Punch Out Wii is too bad. I really don't think it. it it's really not that bad. So if you just kind of go with that and you just ignore whatever people say, I think you'll be fine. If you pay attention to it and you start trying to respond, then it'll get worse. But if you just do it and people have yeah. fun you, maybe somebody will complain but, but just ignore it don't say anything <laughs> just ignore it just ignore it because there were some people that said stuff back in 2010 but it was 2010 it was the internet wasn't what it is today so uh so just ignore it nintendo please make a new punch out um all right so uh so i think that is that we have luano typing in the chat here mm -hmm. or in the discord but i don't know if it's he's gonna type the message in time um so i'll wait for him 
in the meantime i'll take a couple questions from the chat from the the general chat so if you guys have some questions we'll see if we can just rapid fire answer those um and probably round this podcast off at about an hour 30 i think that'd be a good uh spot to kind of stop at hour 30 uh while Luano gets this next one in um let's see here he said i doubt metroid prime 4 ever comes out don't bet on that metroid prime 4 is definitely coming out <laughs> it's definitely a thing they've spent way too much money um all right let's see here let me try to go back up to see if there's any um see if there's any questions here um yeah i don't think anybody's really a asking any questions they're just commenting on the questions that we have and luano is taking a long time to type this one okay it must so, be right in the paragraph yeah it must be okay he, he got it in here but let me answer what dank had to say here first this is, how would you um how would you overhaul the eShop? um i'm not a big eShop browser guy so i wouldn't really overall but i'd probably make it more like the wii u eShop. um that'd probably be the one thing that i do but i'll be honest i don't really go and search around the eShop. i just type in what i want and buy and often i'll even go on the um I'll go on like the web page and I'll just download, just pay and download stuff from there too. So uh, maybe that's a better question for stealth. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I'd want and like, I'm not a, I'm a physical game buyer mostly. Yeah, me too. Um, Maybe like a filter on the top 30 sales chart that would be by genre. So I could see like the top 30 RPGs sold, you know, the top 30 action games and things like that instead of just the overall. Um, But that's like a minor thing. Yeah, I would just probably make it faster. Like, if you could just make it, like, way yeah, faster. Yeah, not every second, but yeah. that's more of a slip hardware issue. Yeah, if they could just make it, like, way faster, that'd be that'd be fine. Uh, okay, Luano actually has the question here. He said it's a paragraph. Yes, it was a paragraph. So, uh, what do you, uh, what do you think? What do you think Platinum will do with their next main Bayonetta game? With the leaks, I've heard, uh, Nate, the hate, I think they're going to try again to go semi-open world refine the gameplay and story-wise i think it'll be a direct sequel to three with the multiverse uh yeah i mean if you beat bayonetta three clearly there's a setup for the next one so yeah i think they're going to kind of go in that same realm you know i don't really see them you know uh going away from what they already set up because that ending was wild um but maybe they take you to a different multiverse maybe they take you to a different one where you play as a different type of Bayonetta or something like that. And maybe you go back in the past. Maybe it's a prequel. Um, you know, you never know. Maybe it's during the Umbria Wars. Maybe you play uh, during that. So, yeah. I didn't know there was any leaks, though. Was there leaks? <laughs> Bayonetta, Bayonetta 4? I didn't know there was any leaks. I don't know. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see, though. Um, yeah, OJ, I'm a little surprised and disappointed at you. What? Um, you're, you're supposed to say, to hell with Bayonetta. Where's Astral Chain 2? <laughs> Astral Chain 2, well, he said, like, you know, uh, I think Astral Chain 2 is coming. Obviously, that's Tura-san. He does Astral Chain. That's the guy who does Nier Automata. And he's been suspiciously quiet about everything. I do think Astral Chain 2 is coming. But I yeah, think that it's going to be the next gen switch. I love Bayonetta. I don't want to see it again until Astral Chain 2 is out. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I think Astral Chain 2 would be before Bayonetta 4. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think I mean, Bayonetta 4 be. is, like, way down the road. Yeah. I mean, okay, well, this is a prediction. Then I guess Astral Chain 2 for Switch 2's first year. I'll, I'll say that. Oh, that would be wild. That would be... I, I think if they do that, that would get so many more eyes on the game. Cause it's like okay it's the first year it's exciting game you know astral chain the first one came out in the second year or third calendar year of the switch i think that if they did that that would be super 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 cool they i'd be down with it and if they had like obviously backwards compatibility or a boot like a boost to the, the a patch yeah. to make the first game run better and all that um so yeah, i mean yeah. i'll say you know whenever the, like the switch 2 reveal event is i feel like platinum games will have a game just because like the partnership oh. has been pretty strong Oh yeah, there's there's definitely gonna be a reveal in that first year. I'll say the first year. The first yeah. year there will be a platinum games title on there. Whether it's hey, look, you can play Astral Chain Enhanced and we're working on the sequel, or you know, something else, maybe a smaller game, Bayonetta Origins 2 or something like that, where the team's been working on that. But they're they're definitely gonna do something. They're definitely gonna do something. So uh so yeah. Um 
Oh yeah, J2 thinks that uh, J2 thinks that Ashton 2 is 2024. Yeah, so I, I hope, man. I hope they they did they have some ideas for like the next game. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but all right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Thank you so much to everybody who um, who came onto the stream. I do appreciate that. Um, I had a brand new video uh, that is up for people to go watch. So if you have not seen it yet on the channel. You can definitely check it out. I'm going to put a link to it. And Stealth, um, if you can tell them where they can find you at, that would be fantastic. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Stealth40K. And uh, you cover sales and yeah. uh, oh, game and I'm also on. I'm also on threads now. I'm not super active, but you got to hold the name. Um, and, I'm, and I'm at Stealth40K on threads too. Okay, nice, nice. So check out Stealth. 40k on um on twitter and threads. twitter and threats twitter and threads good stuff and of course you can find me right here youtube i'll be making a new video uh tomorrow i don't know i think i'm gonna do like a buy now before a rare video i'm not sure I, I was gonna do like some type of evergreen type of game or sorry video um so i'll have something like that and also remember um, i'm gonna start doing some exclusive uh membership content for members and patreon uh, so I think my first uh, my first video will be Sunday. So I might have a regular video and I'll have that video for you guys So it should be a lot of fun um, But yeah, sorry about like I just want to also, uh, you know, talk about this real quick um, uh, the, the regular videos, uh, they're not always gonna be at in the morning So some of those videos are gonna come a little bit later just because I'm working on bigger stuff now So uh, so yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for supporting the players this cross Nintendo uh, podcast we will be back next week of course right around 7 to 7 30 eastern time um and yeah and if you want to support us if you like what you see you want to support us check out the link in the description there is a patreon link uh you can support us with any amount there from a dollar and up and it goes directly into uh this podcast getting better so uh thank you guys so much i appreciate it and uh yeah we'll see you guys for the next one i'll be back tomorrow with the spawncast pre-show so that should be fun and of course, the spawn cast tomorrow as well. So, all right, guys, love y'all. Bye.